Hi, I'm Simon K. Jones, and you're listening to the latest chapter of Tales from the Triverse. Unintended Consequences, Part 2. Previously, the conspirators have been accumulating damaging evidence against Christopher Backer, the leader of the underground SDC crew trying to fight back against corruption. London, 1974. December. Winter air brought a change to London, the cold suppressing the summer's stink and making the city altogether more tolerable. Smog lay in low, compressed bundles down alleyways and around drains rather than spreading to fill the streets. Even the city's pollution huddled together for warmth. The old SDC offices at Stamford and Coyne were freezing, the heating no longer being functional. D.I. Christopher Backer pulled his coat tighter and buttoned up the collar, careful not to drop the newspaper tucked under his arm. It was colder inside than out. The place was a worsening mess, used as a dump or a refuge by the local homeless. The ceiling panels were mostly gone or broken, a result of all the surveillance gear being ripped out when they'd left. Nobody left to spy on. The stairs creaked as he climbed to the upper floor and the bare storage room at the back. The others had already arrived, sat on the fold-out chairs waiting for him. Backer hadn't intended to become the leader of a rebellious underground group, yet here he was. Tugging on those loose threads had led them all to a strange place. Gov, Chakraborty said, nodding at him. All okay? Not especially, Backer said, dropping into a spare chair. It flexed uncomfortably beneath his weight. The restructuring, right? Kaminsky said, without cigarette. He always got twitchy at these meetings. DCS Walpole didn't seem happy. He's not. I'm not. The Commissioner's not. D.I. Ford is apoplectic. He chewed on his lip. These meetings are going to get more difficult. I think it's too dangerous for us all to meet in person like this. We need to be smarter, more careful. Clark grunted. Think they know what we're doing? Possibly. Possibly. We're dealing with a particular form of paranoia. They'd find fault and conspiracy even where there is none, if it helped them. They'll dig up dirt if they need it, fabricate it if there is none. Backer hadn't mentioned his encounter with Shaw, or the inevitable recording. He was compromised, but for now, it would only worry the others. We all knew from the beginning that there were dangers to what we're doing here. We know what happened to John Callahan. He sighed. There's only so far I can take us. This is important, but I need to think about my family. You're giving up. Clark was still standing, his arms crossed. His tone was accusatory. No, no, Backer said, shaking his head. Just being careful. We have evidence, but we can't use it without access to Max Earth tech. We need to be clever, to wait for the right moment. Stay quiet. Clark pointed vaguely at the wall. We just voted to close down portal travel for good. This is going to get a lot worse before it gets better. I know. Our hands are tied here. We may need to get to the Ethiopian portal. Kaminsky laughed. That's easier said than done. Hopping on an airship is going to be a bit too conspicuous. I might be able to get you and Chakravorty an assignment there, Backer said, thinking out loud. You've worked there previously with the local force. There's precedent, especially with the Addis portal becoming more important to Max Earth Transit. Detective Burhane is a good guy, Jack Caborty said. Works with Justin. Pretty sure we can trust him. It won't be trivial, but I'll look into it as a possibility. Unfolding his newspaper back a flicked to the financial pages and held it up for the others. And then there's this. I don't know if you've read it already. The papers bore me, Kaminsky said. What is it? Backer tapped at the headline. The financial markets on Max Earth are crashing. That hasn't happened for centuries, according to this writer at least. It's supposed to be impossible, because the AIs regulate the markets in real time. They're what hold the Triverse together, economically speaking. Clark reached out for the paper and scanned over the article. So what's changed? Nobody knows, but I think we know. That new AI, Kaminsky said, the corner of his mouth curling in disgust. The one they've been building, the one that attacked Justin. That would be my guess, Backer said. But none of us here are experts in Max Earth tech or artificial intelligence. 
But if you're looking for what's changed, that rogue AI is it. A random factor seeding chaos. Markets crashing, Clark said. Meanwhile, the kingdom just voted to kneecap itself. What next? Feels like we're running out of time, Kaminsky said, opening and closing the lid of a cigarette packet. Christopher Backer's house was exactly as Holland expected. He'd never had cause to visit, and as the night's shadows clawed their way up the street, he stared at the semi-detached family home, complete with tidy front garden, raised up from the street, and its three floors up to a steepled window. No, four floors. It was one of those London townhouses that had a basement tucked away, but still visible from street level. The DI's salary was good, but not this good. There were decisions to be made. Miller had tasked him, tasked him with taking down his own DI, a man he'd worked under for years. There was no doubting that something was terribly amiss at the SDC, and with Becker in particular. He'd been meeting with Kaminsky, Chakraborty and Clark, not regularly or frequently, but also not openly. Their covert gatherings reeked of misbehaviour. He still didn't entirely understand why, but that could come later. The man was cornered, and he probably already knew it. Whatever they were up to, they deliberately kept Holland out of it. And sure, and Hobb, presumably, when she'd still been on the team. None of Golding's lot were involved, as far as he could tell. Holland would bet a month's pay that Styles had been part of it when she'd still been in town. Perhaps she still was, somehow, even while operating from Palinor. If there was one thing Holland hated, it was factions. Stupid infighting, getting in the way of everything else. The only faction he put any stock in was himself. Anybody else was too unreliable. They were up to something and it bothered Holland that he didn't know what it was. Miller still held all the cards and had given him only scraps. The man was an asshole, but he had influence. For now, at least. None of that bothered Holland. He wasn't one to follow the crowd, but he also liked having a job and a wage and being able to afford a night out or a bottle of booze or a session with an far whore down the barrel. He didn't ask for much, but he also wasn't going to let anyone take it away. Decisions indeed. He could walk away from this still, probably, even if it meant finding a new posting somewhere else. Going ahead carried just as much risk, given that he didn't have all the information. The clicking of brogues on the pavement brought him back to the moment. Backer was returning to his home, his breath visible, in the cold evening air. The man had no idea what was about to hit him. Crossing the street, Holland timed his own arrival to coincide with Backer reaching his front door. Backer, Holland called from the gate. The man turned, his shoulders already slumped. He didn't look surprised, just disappointed. Frank, he said, what brings you to my house? Got something for you, Holland said. That right? Probably best we go inside? Right, Backer said, nodding. Children will be asleep, try not to wake them. Holland swung open the gate. There'd be no going back from what he was about to do. Thanks for listening. You can get the chapter notes and lots more over at the newsletter at simonkjones.substack.com. New chapters go out every week.